I'm playing uh, uh, Space Invaders Theranos Edition. It's a, a game that was uh, created by a former Theranos employee. The invader in this uh, version of the game is me, along with some uh, Zika viruses. And the, uh, the machine gun at the bottom of the screen is Theranos' mini lab blood testing device and the bullets that it's shooting are its little nanotainer vials. You know, it's, it's another one of the, the crazy twists in this uh, crazy story that has essentially consumed the past three and a half years of my life. Theranos is a diagnostic startup uh, that was founded in Silicon Valley in 2003, and uh, its product was a device that was going to enable you to run the full range of laboratory tests off just a drop or two of blood from a finger. It was founded by a Stanford dropout, uh, Elizabeth Holmes, uh, in, in 2003, and she rose to fame about 10 years later in 2013 graced the covers of, of magazines, and her company reached a valuation of uh, more than $9 billion. And then uh, I came along, and the Wall Street Journal came along, and, uh, and we published a, uh, a story that revealed that the company was actually doing the vast majority of its blood tests on commercial analyzers purchased from third parties. This is what happens when you work to change things. And first they think you're crazy, then they fight you, and then all of a sudden you change the world. Investors uh, in the end were defrauded and, and uh, patients, uh, the, the health of patients were, was jeopardized. Theranos investors did not do what you would consider uh, sufficient due diligence. You need to consider the environment. The environment was uh, an enormous uh, bubble and uh, incredible sums of money were flowing into uh, the Silicon Valley ecosystem and, and being really thrown at startups, and, and Theranos was one of them. Um, and so any investors you know, that, that did uh, try to do a little due diligence and ask too many questions were turned down. Uh, the other thing, uh, the other factor uh, here in play is that uh, uh, Elizabeth was an incredibly smart, uh, charismatic, charming, young woman. People don't even know that they have a basic human right to be able to get access to information about themselves and their own bodies. Her eyes are part of her she magic spell. Uh, they're part of her charisma. She, she seems to be able to uh, look at people intently without blinking uh, longer than, than the average human being can. And we'd like to see a world in which every person gets access to this type of basic testing. Her um, idol was Steve Jobs, and she shared this trait with him, which is that she had an ability uh, to, to make people suspend uh, disbelief. Uh, she has this uh, reality distortion field, just like Steve Jobs. She also has this very deep voice. One employee, uh, this is an anecdote in, in my book, um, uh, caught her uh, slipping out of her baritone and was really thrown off by that and realized at that point that she was faking the, the deep voice. We really resonate with this concept of better transparency in lab testing. I mean, I've, I've been a reporter for 20 years and in all those years I had never encountered uh, the amount of, of pushback and the amount of uh, resistance and, and the counterattack, frankly, uh, that, uh, that I encountered reporting this story. So to give you an idea of how uh, the company and Elizabeth uh, reacted uh, to the publication of my first story, uh, she had been invited uh, to uh, speak at our technology conference. I expected her to, to push back hard and to come out swinging, but I was stunned uh, by some of the things she said. I, I simply didn't think that uh, she would go before a, a public forum and, and bald-faced lie again and again and again. At the end of August, uh, FDA did an inspection at Theranos. That being conflated with, you know, is there concerns about our testing method methodology, which was what was written in the Wall Street Journal article, is just completely false. She actually never agreed uh, 
to be interviewed by me. And so by the time my first uh, story about Theranos was published, I had been trying to interview Elizabeth for five and a half months. And we're now um, uh, some three and a half years later, and uh, Elizabeth Holmes uh, has uh, never agreed to speak uh, with me. I think if I had the opportunity to finally meet with Elizabeth in person today, I would ask her, how were you able to justify putting patients in harm's way? This is fun. I loved Space Invaders growing up. I had an Atari, my favorite game. That and Pac-Man. Oh, stopped. Here we go again.